In this video, I'm going to be comparing the Fujifilm Instax Wide 300 versus Polaroid 600 cameras. Hey everybody, welcome to Dan Bowen Photography. If this is your first time watching, please be sure to hit that subscribe button down below to stay up to date on all of the awesome photography content I'm putting out. Now let's get to it. So today I thought it'd be interesting to do a comparison of the Instax Wide 300 and Polaroid 600 cameras and just give a recommendation on which one that I use. So I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of each of these camera lines and show some of these sample images that I've shot with both cameras. So let's start with the Fuji Instax Wide 300. So some of the pros of the Instax Wide 300 are it's a brand new camera. You can buy it brand new out of the box, something that you know will be functioning. Whereas if you're buying an old Polaroid 600 camera, it may not even work depending on the condition of it and how well it was taken care of. So I think it's a very good thing to be able to buy a brand new camera, something that you know will be reliable and working. Another advantage is that the Instax Wide Film is much cheaper and also more reliable than Impossible Project Film, which is the only film you can still shoot in Polaroid 600 cameras. So for a pack of Instax Wide 300 film, you can get, I think, two packs of 10 shots for around $16. So you're gonna pay less than a dollar a photo for an Instax Wide photo, whereas with Impossible Project Film, it's around $25 for a pack of eight. So you're gonna pay around $3 for a photo on Polaroid 600 cameras. Another aspect of the Instax Wide 300 that can be seen as a pro or a con depending on personal preference is that it has a larger, wider frame to it. So rather than the classic square frame, you get a wider, more panoramic, not really panoramic, but you get a wider frame to work with and can take more interesting landscape photos and even turn the camera up and take portrait photos. So I think that the Instax Wide is a little bit more flexible in the types of subjects you can shoot with it as compared to a square format photo of the Polaroid 600. So let's talk about some of the downsides of the Instax Wide 300 though. I think the first one is that the viewfinder is pretty inaccurate. So it's kind of frustrating to try to compose your image because you don't really know what you're gonna get until you've already taken the photo. Now, I talked about this in my video of how to shoot with an Instax Wide 300, which I will link up here if you're interested in watching that. But I find that to be a very frustrating thing when shooting with the Instax wide camera is that I end up getting all these other things in the frame that I didn't initially compose in there. So it can be frustrating to shoot with. Another con of the Instax wide 300 is it's a more expensive camera to pay for up front. So while the film is cheaper, you're gonna pay around $100 for the Instax wide 300 in most cases. Whereas you can get Polaroid 600 cameras for as cheap as $5 at a thrift store and more reliably tested ones cost around $40 or $50 depending on who you're buying it from. So you're gonna spend a little bit more money up front for the Instax Wide 300, but if you're shooting a lot of Polaroid film, then you will save money in the long term with the Instax Wide 300. Another con is if you're interested in shooting black and white film, there is no monochrome film for the Instax Wide cameras. Now this could change in the future. Fujifilm did release a monochrome film for Instax mini cameras, but they have yet to release this film for Instax wide cameras. So if you wanna shoot black and white film, the only option is Polaroid 600 cameras. All right, so that's it for the Instax wide 300. Let's talk about the Polaroid 600. So let's start with some of the advantages of the Polaroid 600 cameras. So for starters, it is a cheaper camera to buy up front in most cases. So you're gonna be able to save money if you're not shooting a lot of Impossible Project film. But again, this is sort of mitigated in the long term. Because Fujifilm Instax film is cheaper than Impossible Project film, you're not gonna save money in the long run. But I was actually able to find a Polaroid one-step camera at a thrift store for $5. So you can get these cameras really cheaply in some cases. If you're buying them online from a more reliable source, you might pay like 40 or $50. But again, you're gonna get in more cheaply with the Polaroid cameras than with the Instax camera. Advantage number two, is you get that classic vintage square format. Now for me personally, when I'm shooting Polaroid cameras and instant film cameras, I like the square format. I think it just looks more like a Polaroid than the Instax wide photos. So for me personally, I prefer the classic square frame. Another advantage of the Polaroid 600 cameras is that there are a lot of different variety of models. 
Now, most of them have a lot of the same types of features, but there are more Polaroid 600 cameras out there and a, a larger variety of those cameras than the Fuji Instax wide cameras. I think there's only two or three models of those and then some other ones that are made by third party sources. But with the Instax wide line, you have a really limited options in terms of different types of cameras you can get as opposed to the Polaroid 600 cameras. So what are some of the cons of Polaroid cameras? Well, for starters, the cameras are old and they may not be working properly. So whenever you're buying a camera at a thrift shop, you're not necessarily gonna know that it's going to work. Now, I lucked out when I bought my Polaroid One Step camera. It actually had an old film pack in it with a working battery. So I was able to test the shutter and know that the camera was working before I bought it. But again, if you're buying a camera for like $5, I think it's just worth it to just buy it and roll the dice on it rather than be cheap and not spend $5 because the payoff is you end up getting a functioning camera if it is indeed working. Another one of the cons of the Polaroid 600 is that the film is pricier and it's also sometimes not that reliable. Now, I've had some inconsistent results with Impossible Project Film. Sometimes the color temperature is weird or it doesn't match up right. And if you don't clean the rollers, then you can also have some problems there as well. And I haven't really experienced any of these types of problems with Fujifilm Instax film. It's a lot more reliable and easier to use and it's cheaper. But again, there's just something about that classic a Polaroid look that you get with these cameras that just really isn't present in the Instax cameras. So what's the verdict? Which one do I prefer, the Instax Wide 300 or Polaroid 600 cameras? Well, actually for me, it's kind of a tie. I end up shooting basically equally with each of these cameras, but if I'm gonna be shooting Polaroids, I'll usually be shooting with my SX70 camera. But if I had to choose just one, I would probably go with the Polaroid One Step. I just prefer shooting with the classic Polaroid cameras as opposed to the newer Instax cameras. Now again, if you do like the wider frame and you wanna buy a camera where the film is cheaper, I would definitely recommend getting the Instax Wide 300. It's a great camera. It's a lot of fun to shoot with, but just for me personally, I prefer shooting with vintage Polaroid cameras. So I wanna hear what you guys think. Leave a comment down below and let me know which camera do you prefer shooting with? The Fujifilm Instax Wide 300 or a Polaroid 600 camera? Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And I've also linked up a couple of tutorials that I've done on the Fuji Instax Wide 300 and Polaroid 600 cameras. So check out the links in the description or the cards on the video if you're interested in checking those out as well. Now we'll see you soon, folks. This has been another episode of Dan Bowen Photography. Peace.